in this video, we're talking all about music scams. That's right. There are people out there that are going to prey on musicians and there's a bunch of different things that you need to be on the lookout for. So that's what we're going to dive into here today. Sorry, I'm not going to be that mysterious for the whole video. Yes, we are talking music scams. This video will be broken up into two different sections. I'm going to start with the 10 scams that I see too often on the internet. So all of the scams that you should be looking out for. And then I'm going to give you 10 tips for how you can avoid being scammed online. Now, right up front, let me just say that this isn't to discourage you. This isn't to say that you can't be successful, that sharing music online is not a cool thing. It is a super cool thing. I devote a lot of my time to helping folks just like you create, record and release your best music online. Uh, but uh, like everything online, approaching things with a healthy dose of skepticism can actually be a good idea and it can protect you and keep you safe. If you're watching here live, it is Scam Awareness Week here in Australia. Um, I don't know if it's an international thing, but that there's a lot of talk and chatter at the moment about avoiding online scams. So I thought, what better time than to talk about some online music scams? So without any further ado, let's jump into this. 10 of the music scams that I see that you should just be on the lookout for and make sure that you're aware of. So let's dive into it with with number one. So, numero uno is copyright claims and content ID. So I've covered this a lot on the channel before, and if you search my name, Pete Johns and copyright, there's a heap of videos here on YouTube about that. But copyright claims and content ID are a part of YouTube, and what can happen with these is that if you release a song and someone else uh, releases the same song, <laughs> then they put a copyright claim on it, you can own the song, but it can still claim against you. So this happens a lot with uh, beat makers and samplers and people that are creating music and backing tracks and other things with that. If someone grabs hold of your music and releases it through a service and puts YouTube content ID on it, then you can actually be stuck with that. Now, how do you avoid this one? Well, it's kind of difficult to do. What I say when you're creating music, a lot of folks will say, copyright your music. As soon as you've written it, formally and officially copyright it. I kind of go another way. I I say that hiding in plain sight is often the best way to go with this. What do I mean by that? Well, when you're creating music, start sharing it as early as possible. So if you have music, I actually think it's the other way around. I think if you hold it to yourself and you don't share it, if you share it with one person and that one person is a little bit, uh, a little bit underhanded and they release the music, then they can actually claim that it was theirs all along. So if you're having concerns about copyright and concerns about content ID on YouTube or anywhere else, Maybe just keep that in mind that my advice is, yes, go ahead and formally copyright or do what I do and hide in plain sight. It's often an easier way to go. Let's move on to number two. <coughs> Excuse me. Pay to play. My goodness. So these are pretty ubiquitous out there and these have been happening for decades. And when I say pay to play, this is where you as an artist or a band, you're, you're excited, you're out there, you're looking for gigs, you want to play somewhere and you get an offer in your email inbox and it says something like, hey, I'm putting on an event, a tour, a concert, a gig, I have a venue, whatever it is, uh, we, we'd like to invite you along to play. All that you need to do is pay this $200 non-refundable uh, amount and then we'll get you in front of blah number of people. Now there's different variations of this. There might not be an upfront payment, but you might need to uh, get all your friends to buy tickets to this. And in fact, there's some resources that I've linked down in the description to some videos. And one of those talks about this very issue, this whole pay to play issue. And it's very interesting hearing from some folks about how that is actually working. So uh, all I'll say with this is that if, if you do want to play at a venue or if you're looking to play, it kind of works that they should be paying you. At very least, you should be playing playing and there should be no money exchanging hands. If it's an open mic night or you're doing some sort of artist night, then yeah, maybe you won't get paid for that or maybe they'll give you a jug of beer as your payment. But if you're having to pay significant amounts to play at a venue, uh, just keep in mind, is this really going to do the right thing for you? And uh, is this going to further your career uh, or are you just going to be throwing your money and then end up in a dingy pub at midday on a Sunday playing to four people? Yeah, just be very, very careful with that. This is one that all too many people get all too often, and it's the SoundCloud comments. So, 
How does this one work? Well, all of us work hard to create music and to release our music. And if you upload your music to SoundCloud or the same can happen with Bandcamp, Jade Starr just uh, sent me a message before this saying the same thing happened to her on Bandcamp. It can happen on Spotify. Anywhere where you're releasing music and people can contact you, then sometimes you'll get comments that are like, wow, really like your music. Please DM me and I'll uh, get you onto playlists. I'll get you famous. I'll get you a record deal, whatever it happens to be. Yeah, a lot of these are unfortunately cookie cutter responses that uh, people go out and put on a lot of different accounts and they may or may not have even listened to the song. You'd hope that they at least have the courtesy to listen to your tune and think it's actually good. But in my experience, that's not always the case. Now, what these scams uh, are preying on is, unfortunately, your emotions. You're a creative person. If you're creating music and you're putting your music out there, unfortunately, there are some people that are going to give you a bum steer and are going to say whatever they need to say to make you feel good so that when the conversation turns around to how much cash you should be paying them, then, uh, yeah, they uh, can benefit from that. So, beware the SoundCloud comments. And some of the tips I'm gonna give you in the second section will help you with this sort of stuff because you just need to do your research and be very aware of who you're talking to and what they're actually offering. Um, beware of courses and fake gurus. Now, right up front, there are some really good music courses out there that are offered by some very reputable folks. So uh, I know a lot of people that have used Graham Cochran's courses, Joe Gilder's courses. A lot of folks love Rick Beato, our own Patrick, uh, the Garage Band Guide has some great courses. Dean Davis, there's uh, a bunch of folks that are providing good quality courses. And the thing about their courses is you know the person, like that you can see behind the course and you know what's going on there. And you can see that these are actual music producers. The problem we're having at the moment is the rise of the fake guru. And what a fake guru is, is someone who learns a little bit about something and then is instantly a guru. They're instantly trying to tell you how to do the thing. So what I would say with this one, and again, getting into advice mode here, but if you're looking at something and someone's saying, hey, I'm going to be, I'm going to teach you how to make beats. I'm going to teach you how to produce. Go and look at their back catalog. Like see what they're producing. You wouldn't go to a banker or to an accountant if they weren't a qualified CPA or if they didn't have experience or if they weren't actually doing anything. If someone had just done an accountancy course at the local TAFE or the local community college like six weeks ago, and then they were trying to do your taxes, you'd be a little bit worried. The same thing goes with any sort of educational stuff. If someone is really ramping it up and selling it and then you do your little bit of digging and you realize that they've never actually released a song themselves, maybe they're not the person to be teaching you how to create music. So keep that in mind again. Courses, great. There are many gurus out there that are doing the right thing, but the fake gurus are the ones you need to look out for. There's plenty of ways you'll be able to tell them. Record deals. Now the deals is in inverted commas here. The reason that the deals, I'll stop doing that now. The reason the deals is in inverted commas is that Sometimes these are record deals. Sometimes they're 100% not. So sometimes they, it is folks that are just getting something that looks like a formal official contract. Some of them might even pretend that they're from A&R rep companies or actual recording studios, and they're going to send you form letters that are going to be like, hey, we noticed your song, insert cookie cutter name of song, uh, and we really enjoyed it. Uh, we would like to give you an opportunity to put it in front of our executives. All you need to do is pay a submission fee. Yep, there's that paying again, right? All you need to do is pay a submission fee of $200 and send us your song and give us all your socials and then we'll arrange for it to be played to Mr. Big Executive Man and then you'll get a record deal and we'll make you a star. Doesn't often work this way, you see. Because if someone is actually working as an A&R rep and if someone is actually wanting to offer you a record deal, chances are they want to snap you up. If they think you're that talented, they're not going to then go, oh, we want to put you through this process where you have to pay us money. No, usually that's the way they're actually making the money. There may or may not be any record exec. There may or may not be anything they actually do for you, but chances are you're being led down the garden path if you're getting a record deal. Now, the other part of record deals, and I've got a link down below to a really cool video I think you have to be a YouTube premium member to watch it. It's called The Boy Band Con. It's about uh, the uh, Lou Pearlman and the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and how the contracts that they signed, they were making millions. They were selling millions of CDs and selling out stadium tours and they were making like 10 grand each. So they were making millions of dollars for their promoters, for their record labels. 
and they themselves were making absolutely nothing. And that is the case, unfortunately, with a lot, a lot of record deals and contracts. People think, oh, wow, I've made it because I've got a record deal. But what, what the record companies do is it's, it, it's like they have a farm. It's like a horse stable. I know this sounds horrible, but it's like a stable of artists. You've probably heard that term before, right? Stable of artists. So they get a hundred different artists in, in the hope that one or two of them are going to pop and make it big. Here's the problem though. The 98 or 99 that don't end up in debt because they've been given these advances, they've been given money, they've been given studio time. So they're in debt. The two that make it, not only are they success, like they're successful and they might be making some money, but they have to subsidize the 98 that didn't make it. So the record labels, the record companies are in this position where even the people that are successful, they have to pay for the other 98% that aren't successful. So you're not actually going to make that much money. Really good reason to stay independent, I would have thought. Uh, but yes, that's your own choice to make. Let's jump into some of the things that people are going to say. So some of the comments, some of the statements that you're going to see online. These will be sort of quick fire, but I just wanted to talk you through them. Now, this one's not necessarily a scam, but it's definitely something to be wary of. Let's grow together. Let's sub for sub, like for like. Let's, let's create this community where all we do is like each other's stuff, grow each other's subscriber base, grow each other's followers. Followers. that's not really going to do a whole lot. That's going to increase what we call vanity metrics. Vanity metrics are things like number of followers on Instagram, number of Spotify plays, number of subscribers on YouTube. Those things these days are so easy to fake that they don't really hold a lot of meaning anymore. And the other problem is that if you've got a whole bunch of followers and a whole bunch of supporters that are literally just other artists that are just liking and subscribing to your stuff well, that's not really going to help you. You're not actually going to build up a fan base and a following by doing that. So it's not really a scam, but I wanted to mention it here because I still see it so often and people are like, oh, I just need to get to X number of followers, X number of subscribers, and then that big record deal is going to be coming my way. Not always the case. So be wary of that. I'll get you on the radio. Now, this one's been replaced by the next one in more recent times, but oh boy, uh, the amount of times I've seen these this in the past, which is, I'll get you playback on radio stations. I've got an in with all the radio stations in Southern California. I've got an in with all this big radio network in Australia. The amount of people that seem to have ins with radio stations <laughs> is amazing. Uh, I don't think even the radio stations have ins with themselves these days. But yeah, be wary of this one because getting played on the radio... Number one, it's very costly if you do try to go down these paths. They usually want to charge you thousands of dollars. And then the, the payback on that is not actually that much. I mean, the number one problem is not many people actually listen to the radio anymore. And it's not really gone to the days where, you know, you hear a cool song on the radio and you phone up the radio station. You're like, do, 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 Mr. DJ, what is that song playing? It's amazing. I want to buy the, the record from my record store. There's so many things wrong with that sentence. Radio station, phone, record store. Uh, anyway, so yeah, be very careful if someone wants to get you on the radio. Uh, I'll get you into playlists. So this is the modern version of I'll get you on the radio. The amount of people that I think that uh, they can get you into these curated playlists and that getting into a playlist is going to make or break you. Unfortunately, there's been a few examples of where someone, again, has blown up because they've got onto this curated playlist, everyone's heard their song, and then suddenly they're a gazillionaire. It often doesn't work that way. I know I'm being super, like, you might be saying, Pete, you're just crushing all my hopes and dreams. No, there's still plenty of ways, and if you've watched this channel before, there's plenty of ways to engage with the community, to be a successful independent artist, and to have a lot of fun with your music. But some of these things aren't going to do it. If you're going to spend your time, your money, and your effort, spend it on honing your craft. Spend it on engaging with an active community. Try not to spend it with folks that are going to say, I'm going to make you a star and get you on all the playlists. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'll get you exposure because. And the because is that I've got... App, 100,000 Instagram followers. I've got a YouTube channel with 100,000 accounts. I've got 100,000 members on my Facebook group. These are the sort of things that, again, we hear from a lot of people that people are coming at them and saying, hey, yeah, I'll get you exposure. You've, you've probably seen those posts where they're like, hey, just drop drop your latest tune. I've, I've got connections with Blah or I've, I'm going to do a show. And now before you say, Pete, don't you do a weekly show where you play other people's songs? Yeah, but you know what I promise you? <laughs> 
absolutely nothing. Uh, I don't promise you anything apart from giving you some honest feedback and sharing your tune with my community. So hopefully that is a, a good and a positive way to do this sort of thing. But when you're hearing from people, that and they'll always put the number of, of people. So beware the number. As soon as someone says, ah, I, I want to share, I want to share some cool independent music with my 80,000 Instagram followers. Just drop your links down below. And look, these are a bit sort of benign. Nothing's going to happen if you drop a link to your tune. You know, a couple of people might see it and play it. That's fine. But it's when the DMs start flowing that things sort of heat up a little bit, which brings us to our last one here. DM me, bro. Yeah. Basically, there's very few times where someone listens to music and then asks you to DM them that is going to result in a genuine interaction. Because you know what? Most people like me, if I think your song's cool, I'll put a public comment on your SoundCloud, on your YouTube. But what, I'm not going to tell you to DM me. You can di direct message me if you want to, but I'm not going to actually put that there. The DM me is kind of now code for, uh, I've listened to your song, I think I might be able to scam some money out of you. So if you direct message me, I'll pump your tires, I'll blow smoke up your butt for a couple of days until I get to the point where I'm like, ooh, we've built up trust, and then it will come, and then it will be whatever the offer is. Please pay me the $200 to, to I'll get you into these playlists, I'll get you into this. So that's the, the final one there to avoid. Oh, are we feeling a bit sort of crushed now? Are we feeling a little bit uh, down? I really hope not because, again, this is all coming from a place of me wanting to help and be positive. And not everyone out there is doing the wrong thing. In fact, let's take a quick pause before we jump into the 10, uh, my 10 tips for scam avoidance. And I do say avoidance, not evasion. Um, for scam avoidance. And then uh, we'll, we'll dive into those. So, Finding a community, finding your tribe of people is something that's super important. This is going to be a super shameless plug for some of the groups that I'm involved with, but many of you know that I use GarageBand quite a lot. I'm a member of the GarageBand users Facebook group. That is a great group because you get a bunch of folks in there that are real people. And I'll talk in a moment about why that's super important. And they're not out for anything except to maybe further their musical experience, but also to help others. The same thing over at Create Record Release, which is my Facebook group that I created for, for this exact reason. We've got a group of people there and the good thing about groups like this is that someone can come there and say, hey, I got this email that says this and this and this. Is this legit? Is this a scam? And you get that power of other people that can say, actually, I got the same email. It's definitely a scam. Or actually, that kind of sounds a bit legit. I, I would check it out, but maybe be careful for reasons X, Y, and Z. So yeah, it's not all bad. There is good stuff out there. And what we're going to dive into now is my 10 tips. I told you I'd say avoidion. My 10 tips for scam avoidion or okay, evasion or avoidance if you want to go with that. Let's take a quick pause because <clears throat> I had a frog in my throat. We'll have a quick drink and then let's continue on with this rant of all rants. So number one <laughs> tip for scam avo avoidance. I'll stop saying avoidion. Scam avoidance. If they've got a at gmail.com email address, now you might be thinking, Pete, Gmail is the biggest email provider in the world. Why is that dodgy? Why do I have to worry if they've got an at Gmail? I've got an at Gmail. So do I. I have an at Gmail address. But the thing is, if they are working for a company, you know what happens when you work for a company or a big business or an organization? You get an email address pretty early on, probably day one. So if someone is saying they are from BMG, they are from Universal, they are from Joe's record label, whatever it is, they're going to have an at that domain address. So you can email me, I'm Pete at studiolivetoday.com. So if someone is a mega record producer at gmail.com or even sometimes they'll just put uh, blah.universal at gmail.com to try and sort of make you think that it's more formal than it's not. I actually haven't come across yet a situation where someone's emailed me from an at gmail.com address where it hasn't been some sort of, at least if it's not a scam, at least someone that is working on behalf of. They're, they're an affiliate of a company and they're trying to sell things on behalf of that company. So beware the Gmail email address. Look for the person when it comes to things that you're getting. So for me, if uh, I don't actually sell anything online right now and I don't have many services that I promote, but when I do, you can pretty easily, you can search Pete Johns in your Google and you'll come across a bunch of stuff. All my music, all of my videos, all of my profiles. I'm pretty transparent. 
when you can't find the person, that's when you need to start worrying. When the person seems to have this curated, really super slick, but a little bit minimal profile, that's when you have to be careful. If the person doesn't ever have any videos that are recent of them actually talking, and they don't really seem like a real person, that's when you've got to worry a little bit about the person. So look for the person behind the thing and try to find them. Uh, now, that's not always going to work, as we'll see in a couple of tips time, but it can be a really good way to just do some research and some due diligence around the actual person making some sort of offer. Get a second opinion. Now, this is related to what I said before about having a group or having a forum or having a group of trusted people that you can get a second opinion from. So before you pull the trigger on any sort of offer, anything that you're looking to do, ask around. You don't have to jump into it. There is no time pressure. Again, a hint of another one we're talking about. You don't have to jump into anything straight away. You can take your time, get yourself a second opinion. Next up, do your research. Yes, get out there and actually research it. Now, there, there are some things around which we'll talk about in a moment that you have to worry about, that you have to be concerned with, but at least if you do your due diligence research, go onto YouTube, go onto Google, go onto Facebook, go onto LinkedIn, try and find as much information about the person, the company, the offer. Now, yeah, I'll, I'll jump straight to the next one because, uh, no, it's not the right one. I'll talk about it here. <laughs> you can come into trouble because say say you've got a name of a company and then you put that name of that company and then scam afterwards. Well, companies are pretty smart these days. They actually do a lot of tweaking, a lot of SEO, search engine optimization work to try and remove that. They'll, they'll put positive things behind the scam search term. Yet companies can actually buy the search term, their name and scam, and then put an ad in front of anything that may be a scam. It's, yeah, it's the way the internet is. It's the pay to play mentality of some of these internet advertising. But the thing that you wanna keep in mind there is that you wanna search below that first couple of pages. You wanna go like seven or eight pages deep because that's where the real gold is. That's where you're gonna start finding, well, you'll start finding the conspiracy theories and the foil hat wearers, but you'll also find hopefully some truthful posts and some things that are going to help you. So do your research, go a little, a few layers deep and you'll find it's a little bit like an onion. You'll find more and more layers as you get down. Popularity can be faked and this makes it difficult for that research thing because you might research them and you know what's, you know what's easy to do on YouTube? Uh, it's easy to do things like hide your likes and dislikes on your YouTube videos. It's easy to delete any negative comments. Uh, on your blogs, you can delete any negative comments. It is really easy to curate a particular image of yourself and with the rise of getting fake subscribers, fake follows, fake listens, fake plays, then there are definitely ways that people can build up a profile that makes them look all nice and clean and neat and shiny. And then if you look below, beneath the surface, there's a lot going on there. So beware of that as well. Again, use those other tips like getting a second opinion, having a group of people that you trust that you can ask about it. Because if you get 10 of you together and you all go and research, you're gonna do it in a slightly different way. And you might start finding the truth below the things. Time pressure. Time pressure is a red flag in pretty much every scam. Uh, if you've ever got one of those uh, scam emails that are like, uh, we got footage, you webcam, you pay us 24 million in Bitcoin. Uh, you have 24 hours to comply or we call police and get you arrested. That's not far off the actual text of an email that I've actually uh, received. So yeah, if you're getting an email like that, uh, it, it puts time pressure on you. Uh, other things can put time pressure on you. Someone may contact you and like, oh, you know, we've got this amazing offer for you. It's gonna be $200 and we're gonna put you in front of all of these executives, but it, it's all happening in 24 hours. It always seems to be 24 hours. You always have to decide or, or only for the next three hours or for the next one hour. And some of them, like some, you'll go to a website that's weird. You get into these marketing trails of people and you go to their website and it starts counting down a timer and you're like, oh my God, the clock's ticking. It's like a time bomb. It's gonna go off any minute. So yeah. Yeah, any sort of time pressure that makes you think, I've got to do this now, is to, the reason for that is it wants to stop you from doing your research. It wants to stop you from thinking about the pros and the cons and weighing up the opportunity. So anytime you see time pressure, it's not always going to be a really, really bad thing, but take it as a red flag for what it is. Upfront payment. 
yeah, avoid if something's asked you for upfront payment, uh, it can and it, again, you might be saying, Pete, you're a hypocrite when you when you do mixing and when you do services, you ask for upfront payment. Yeah, I'll, I will. I'll ask for a deposit. There's a difference between uh, me providing a service and saying, uh, yeah, it'll cost you 50% upfront. And then when I finish the project and you're happy with it, you pay the other 50%. That's kind of standard terms within the music business. But when you, you're being asked for a lot of money upfront and you're not really sure what you're paying for, that's where the red flag need to be raised and you need to be concerned about that. We've talked about that a lot before. We're on the Homewood stretch here. Hopefully you're enjoying these rants. If you are, hit the like button. That just tells me that you're getting some value. Even if you picked up one or two little nuggets out of this video, hopefully that's going to help you that next time, uh, hopefully you don't walk away from this super paranoid, but hopefully next time you see something, you'll be able to take it with that grain of salt that it needs. You beware of emotive language. Yeah. Scammer's favorite, scammer's best friend is playing into your fears, playing into your emotions, playing into your hopes and dreams. It's why the it's why the scams are successful, is that it's not that people that are scammed, I've been scammed, everyone's been scammed at some point in their life. Uh, it's not that we're stupid people or that we're making stupid decisions, it's that someone has tapped into a desire, a fear, an emotion that we have. So the, it's, and it can be hard, but if you can try and remove that, and if you're seeing an increased amount of emotive language, again, if someone contacts me, there's no emotive language there. I'll, if someone says, hey, Pete, can you help me mix a song? I'll say, sure, here's my rates. Uh, this is what I do for you. And this is what you can expect to see. If I say, oh, can I mix your song? Man, I've mixed some amazing songs. I'm going to make you a star. And then I've got all these contacts. I'm going to get you in front of all these people. Have you ever wanted to be a star? Uh, have you ever wanted to make a whole bunch of money? Yeah, as soon as we get into that, you're into that realm of uh, over-promise, under-deliver and you're probably going to be unhappy with the investment you make in something like that. Uh, assume it's not true and then validate. Now, some people will question me on this because I am a, I'm, a, I'm a naturally skeptical person. It's just my nature. Some people are naturally trusting. So if you are a naturally trusting person, I'm not telling you to go out there and start thinking that everyone's out to get you and that every single thing anyone's ever saying is a lie. But as, when it comes to something that seems, that's out there, just assume, like get for the first impression, just go, it, why is this not true? And then if you can find enough reasons to validate why it is true, that's often a better way to go. Because if you go the other way, you get lured in. Again, the emotive language, the the promises, the, the time pressure, all these things can play on your emotions and make you think that something that is too good to be true is too good to be true. So if it sounds too good to be true, it often is. And that's what I'm going to leave you with here today. The, the number one thing to remember is that there is no such thing as a free lunch. If it does sound too good to be true, then it probably is. And even when something's on offer that's free, remember, if something is free, then you are the product. So you're probably giving away your information or your data if you are doing something for free. If you're paying for it, just know what you're paying for. Read through, I know, no, you don't want to have to read through the 26-page terms and conditions. And you know, most of us with software or with, with websites, we don't. But when it comes to something like this, just be really, really careful. I've linked down below, again, a couple of videos, and there's one there about the music industry, and it's a bunch of folks that started out, and they started getting money, and they signed these contracts because they put big fat wads of cash in front of them, and guess what? They spent their $10,000 in like three days, and then they now owe money to their record labels. And that's a pretty common scenario, pretty common occurrence. So even those that have made it, that have had the skills and the talent, can still get scammed. And it's not even scammed. It's just that they didn't read a contract or they didn't get a lawyer to read over a contract. And they got all these clauses in there about what they have to pay back. So if it sounds too good to be true, it oftentimes is. Once again, I hope you didn't find this too negative. I definitely don't want to make you think that everything online is out to get you. That's definitely not the point. But a little dose of healthy skepticism is going to keep you safe online. It's going to keep you away from these folks that are using these predatory practices to tap into your emotions, to make you feel a certain way. And at the end of the day, to either part you with your money or to exploit you and your music. You don't need it. We live in the future here, folks. You can independently manage everything yourself 
yourself. We have the tools, we have the technology to actually be successful and happy independent artists. And you really don't need anyone except for the wonderful community here on Studio Live today. So thank you for being a part of that. If you do have any comments or your own stories, I would love to hear them. Drop those down in the comments of this video. I want to hear what others should be on the lookout for. Have you had some scams that you've come that have come across your desk that you've either been part of or luckily, thankfully avoided? Please share those with the community. That will really help out other folks. Thanks again for being here, folks, and I'll see you next time.